Good evening. You're watching BBC Newsline. One story dominates our programme tonight. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson has been charged with rape and other historical sexual offences and has stepped down as leader of the DUP. A statement issued by the party earlier also revealed Sir Geoffrey has been suspended as a member of the DUP pending the outcome of a judicial process. The MP for East Belfast, Gavin Robinson, has been appointed as interim party leader. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson strenuously denies the allegations. A 57-year-old woman has also been charged with aiding and abetting in connection with the alleged offences. They were both arrested yesterday morning and were questioned before being charged last night. They are now due to appear in court next month. Throughout our programme this evening, we'll be getting reaction on this from our political editor, Enda McClafferty, and our crime and justice correspondent, Julian O'Neill. But first, our political correspondent, Gareth Gordon, has been following the day's dramatic events as they unfolded. Political downfalls don't come faster than this. Sir Geoffrey Donaldson's grip on power never seemed stronger. Now his days as DUP leader are over, his political career in ruins. After a morning of feverish speculation came this bombshell statement from the DUP chairman saying Sir Geoffrey had confirmed he had been charged with allegations of an historical nature indicating that he was stepping down as leader with immediate effect. He's also suspended as a party member pending the outcome of a judicial process and the party officers have appointed his deputy Gavin Robinson as the interim party leader. I think it's been a devastating revelation and has caused tremendous shock, not just for myself personally or my colleagues within the DUP, but for the community right across Northern Ireland. It came as a great shock. Um, but we are a party and individuals that believe in justice. We have faith in our criminal justice system. Uh, and so in the coming days and months, I think it is important that none of us say anything or act in any way. Uh, that would seek to prejudice what is now an ongoing criminal investigation. It's an outcome unimaginable after the past few weeks in which Sir Geoffrey Donaldson dragged his party back into power sharing after what some said was the speech of his life. Because of the stirring up that is going on, I was threatened. Threatened. By those who never put on a uniform. By those who haven't served our country. And when I checked out, one of the people who threatened me on their register didn't vote at the last election. It's a passion rarely seen since he burst onto the political scene in the 1980s. I belong to the family and I have two members of my family, members of your force, murdered by the provost. And now what do you do in return for that? He became MP for Lagan Valley in 1997, but fell out with the Ulster Unionists over the Good Friday Agreement, later joining the DUP. He eventually became party leader after Edwin Putz was deposed and his career seemed to be at its zenith until today. Well, I think like everyone else, it just came as a huge shock. Sometimes in this business, you, you are aware of things long before they ever get into the public domain, but no one knew about this. It just came as a thunderbolt. But if the assembly were to go down again, I think it would be extraordinarily difficult to get it back up again because people will go, hang on, this is the fifth or sixth time we've done this. It's taken years and years to get to where we are now. And yet, for five minutes into it, and we're down again. And I think if it went down again, and I think that might just stay the hand of some people, even though they're uncomfortable with where they are and with aspects of the deal, I think they realise if this assembly, if the DUP withdraw again in a matter of weeks, getting any unions back in there could be an absolute nightmare. And that is one of the many questions tonight. Over the future of Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, over the future of the DUP, and over the future of Stormont. Gareth Gordon, BBC Newsline. Yes, and in Gareth's piece there, we heard from the new DUP interim leader, Gavin Robinson. Let's hear a bit more of that interview now. When did the party become aware of the allegations and what has been the response of the party to them? Very late last night, uh, the party became aware. Um, whenever it was revealed uh, publicly that there had been an individual uh, and another charged um, and it became clear to us who that individual was. Um, in the early hours of this morning, we took steps to make sure we could bring colleagues together, uh, discuss 
what it was uh, we had learned uh, and take the appropriate steps uh, that we could. And as you know, um, Jeffrey Donaldson has stepped down as party leader. Um, he has indicated that to us, but through our disciplinary process, we similarly had to take uh, the steps to suspend him from party membership until the conclusion uh, of what is now a live criminal investigation. Um, and in discussing that with colleagues, um, it was put to me uh, that there was unanimity uh, across colleagues that I should step forward and act at this time um, as the interim leader of our party. Uh, it's a huge responsibility, not just because of the shocking news uh, we have had, but that will take its course and run its course. Um, but for us, recognising the significant steps forward uh, in Northern Ireland over the last number of weeks, focusing on the importance of making Northern Ireland work, instilling a sense of positivity in devolution and making sure that devolution works for our people. That is the important task uh, at hand. You talk about devolution. This is a nightmare for the DUP, but there are also potential implications for Northern Ireland. It's a big test for the new power sharing government, isn't it? Well, I think the power sharing government uh, not only has been recognised positively in the last number of weeks since its restoration, I think you can see and hear over the last number of days and weeks the importance that the people of Northern Ireland place upon it, the importance, the importance that we place uh, upon it, uh, and the importance that there will be in showing tangible delivery and the positive benefits that our people collectively across Northern Ireland benefit uh, from devolution. That doesn't change. In no way will I dilute or dilute the, the importance uh, of and the import of the news that has been revealed to us um, over the last 18 hours. Uh, but that needs to go through the processes that will now be engaged within it for us politically. East Belfast MP and new interim DUP party leader Gavin Robinson, Gavin Robinson speaking just a short time ago. Well, to discuss the ramifications of today's developments, we can go to our crime and justice correspondent Julian O'Neill and we'll hear political analysis from our political editor Enda McClafferty. Julian, if I can come to you first, what more can you tell us about these allegations facing Sir Geoffrey Donaldson? Well, the PSNI statement early this morning uh, gave no details on the specifics of the charges or indeed their number, but I understand Sir Geoffrey is facing one charge of rape, the most serious allegation, and multiple others which relate to claims of indecent assault. Now, the PSNI in their statement have referred to non-recent offences, so they are historical, but I'm not able to state anything more about the specific time periods which may be involved. This only emerged this morning, but how long will this police investigation have been going on? Well, not very long at all, perhaps only a few months, and triggered, I believe, by two women coming forward. Also suggestions that Sir Geoffrey perhaps knew nothing about this police investigation until he was arrested before breakfast time yesterday and taken for questioning at Antrim Police Station. But events there moved very swiftly, and before the day was out, he was charged. And we should, of course, stress that Sir Geoffrey Donaldson is strenuously denying these charges. He's no longer in Northern Ireland. Uh, I believe he flew to London this morning and there has been no statement from him. But I'm told that his letter to the DUP states that he will be strenuously contesting these charges, strenuously being the word he used in the letter. So what happens next in the judicial process? Well, when he left Antrim Police Station last night, he did so under certain uh, bail conditions, which I have no knowledge of and have not been made public. But he is scheduled to appear at Newry Magistrates Court on the 24th of April. And that could be the time when we hear more details about the allegations. OK, Julian, for now, thank you. And if I can turn to you... I mean, this was a huge political bombshell, but also a massive shock to everyone across Northern Ireland. Was there any sense at all of this coming? Catherine, it takes something to shake Northern Ireland's battle-hardened political landscape, but this certainly has. It has been a political bombshell, you could say, like no other. I spent time recently with Sir Geoffrey Donaldson in Washington, talking to him at length. There was no sense that anything like this was coming. As Julian said there, it came as a surprise to him when the police came knocking on his door yesterday morning and a complete surprise as we heard there from Gavin Robinson to the rest of the, the party within the DUP. So they have been in a sense trying to scramble very quickly to get their heads around what has happened and also to explore the implications not just for the DUP but also for the future of power sharing here. 
And what of the implications for Sir Geoffrey Donaldson's career? We know he's, he has resigned as leader. Yes. What happens next? That's right. He stepped down with immediate effect as party leader. We know, though, that he is staying on as MP at Westminster. There's no sense that there's a he's going to step down from there. Uh, we do know the process at Westminster that if an MP is facing charges that they're asked to stay away from the parliamentary districts uh, until the judicial process runs its course. So we'd expect Geoffrey Donaldson to follow that procedure. Uh, as for what he intends to do personally when it comes to Westminster, well, that remains the big question, of course, because we know uh, the next general election is on the horizon. We don't know a date, but it could be pretty soon. He has a seat in Lagan Valley, of course, which he would be very keen to contest. And of course, the DUP uh, are very keen to hold on to that seat. But given what has happened, it's very difficult to see a way back politically for Sir Geoffrey Donaldson. And some reaction has been coming in from other political parties to, to this news today. What are you hearing? Well, the parties have been very careful to choose their words carefully today, given the fact that we now have a, a live case, uh, in a sense, up and running. Sinn Féin, for instance, let's have a look. Michelle O'Neill, the First Minister, said it's, uh, the onus is now on the politicians to continue to provide the leadership the public expect and deserve. She went on to say that it's vital that they ensure that the four-party executive coalition delivers for the whole of our community now and into the future. We've also had a statement today from the Alliance Party. It reads, our thoughts and sympathies are with those who have been victim to any kind of abuse and for whom these reports may be incredibly distressing. Uh, we do not feel it would be appropriate to comment any further at this time. We've also heard today from the Ulster Unionist leader, Doug Beatty. He said the leadership of the DUP is very much a matter for the DUP. He also said that he was mindful that this is now a criminal investigation and it would not be proper to comment any further at this stage. And we've heard today as well from the TUV leader, Jim Allister, who had a little more to say. He said this had very wide ramifications for unionism. He said Sir Geoffrey must be afforded the protection of innocent until proven guilty. And he finished his statement by saying the damage is not limited to his party, but impacts on unionism as a whole. Enda, Julian, for now, thank you. Enda will come back to you later in the programme. But first, uh, let's move on to some of the...